Hi guys, uh, we're down to the, la the, the last third of phase two of the whitetail rut. Now, how do they get the air musk on that scrape? Well, that the musk on the scrape comes from uh, uh, tarsal glands uh, about halfway up their legs on the inner surface of their legs, of their hind legs. Uh, when we get to this period, those glands have, have really enlarged and they're producing quite a lot of musk and from a viscous uh, fluid uh, that drains out of them almost continuously. And by this time these big dominant bucks are starting to smell pretty musky because of them. Well, when they get to, after they clear the ground, clean it off with their front hoofs usually, uh, and get all the leaves that have fallen off there and scrape that dirt up nice and fresh so it's nice and dark, they'll step onto it with all four of their hoofs, and their hoofs are usually, you know, close enough together so they're all inside the confines of that scrape. And then they'll press their hind legs together so that they're pressing those two tarsal glands together and squeezing out musk from the tarsal gland. And while they're doing that, they urinate on their own legs. It runs down their legs and over the tops of those tarsal glands down to the ground. And that's how they get tarsal musk on the ground scrape. So, there's two scents down there. <laughs> There's the scent of their of their urine, which actually can identify them. It smells different than the urine of all the other bucks living within his square mile range. It, they can identify the buck that made the scrape by that scent alone. And the big dominant buck will produce more musk from those tarsal glands than all the other bucks that live on the range. And uh, it seems to go along with being a, a dominant breeding buck. But they can tell from the sense, the, the, the intensity of musk smell coming, musk scents coming from the smell uh, and the urine, who that buck was that made the scrape. And then they look up there and see those, those busted up branches or boughs ha hanging over the scrape. And, and that kind of reminds them of the time they last fought that big buck and he made, and he very quickly beat them and what could happen if he's caught in the area. Uh, you don't want to be the victim of a buck that makes all that damage on those branches overhanging the scrape. And sometimes they'll even lick the branches up there. I've watched bucks make antlers and ground scrapes and afterwards lick both, either one. Uh, and seemingly as if this is another way that they determine whether they put enough musk on those objects or not. And uh, so, and, and repeatedly, and people, hunters refer to those bare spots on overhanging branches as licking sticks. And that's not a bad, that's not a bad uh, term for that. But that's why they're made. Now, here's, here's one of the big surprises that I have for you. Bucks don't make ground scrapes or antler rubs to attract does and estrus. They don't need to do that. Uh, actually, it would be a waste of time for does because each doe is only an estrus for a period of 24 to 26 hours. And if they waited around at a buck ground scrape for the big dominant buck to appear, they might not appear at, at all in time for them to be bred. Uh, usually if the buck if they don't find that dominant buck soon after they start uh, emitting that pheromone that tells bucks they're an estrus, uh, they'll go find the buck. And he's easy to find because he's pretty stinky. And airborne odors will lead that doe to that buck pretty rapidly. If he's with another doe and estrus at the time, well then he might have two does and maybe they're young fawns and yearlings following him when they go to that buck. But at any rate, so they don't waste time. But And it's commonly believed that does urinate on buck ground scrapes to tell them when they're in estrus. Well, that's ridiculous, too. They just don't do that. You know, my dog can find a, a female dog in estrus a mile away, like nothing. Uh, when that happens, uh, much to my disgust, he suddenly disappears and I can have a hard time finding him and finally somebody will look at his tag and get his my telephone number after 
and call me. And uh, when I go to pick them up, they tell me, well, our female's in heat, or the neighbor's dog is in heat. And he can smell them, a uh, the, uh, female in heat, a mile, maybe two miles away. Well, the same with bucks. They can smell a female in heat a mile away or much further. Uh, and that, because that pheromone has such an effect on them. But um, that just doesn't happen. And besides that, those aren't, aren't emitting that pheromone yet at this time, all the way through this phase throughout. Not until they start, not until we get into early November. Then they finally start emitting that pheromone. So phase two of the rut is not a time when whitetails breed. The only reason whitetails make ground scrapes and antler rubs uh, is to tell other bucks, this is my, this is my breeding ranch. I just like dogs and cats and and uh, wolves uh, marking their ranges with urine. Only uh, at this time of year, when all when these musk glands start coming active, uh, they go a step further and start creating signs that are much easier for other bucks to see and smell. And so that's all ground scrapes are for. Now. A lot of you, <laughs> a lot of guys that come out of the woods in October, they've been out scouting and gee, they find all these nice fresh ground scrapes all over the place and antler ups and they'll come out of the woods saying, boy, they're really in, they're really rotten. <laughs> they're really rotten. Thinking that breeding is going on, but it isn't yet. It still hasn't started. It won't start till November what you think, uh, except in some, maybe in northern Florida. Uh, South Central Texas, and sometimes in Virginia when the white oak <laughs> acorns are particularly abundant, uh, we'll have some early estrus in deer. But that is not, it's not a normal, typical thing. So, anyway, hunting, most guys that are hunting during October are bow hunters. All of them are bow hunters. No gun hunters yet. And uh, there's hardly a, a bow hunter that goes into the woods to hunt without a doe and estrus type lure scent along with them and using them. But it's almost a waste of time. <laughs> now let me tell you why. Millions of hunters have been using that lure scent since the middle 1980s, all over America. And in the beginning, no matter what, bucks everywhere were suckers for the scent. Back when when that first came out and it was a period when I created a video series, a 12 hour video series, 12 part, called White Tail Hunters World. And we photographed, my partner and I photographed all kinds of bucks. And most of them because they were responding, that was back in the middle 1980s, they were responding to smelling doe and estrus pheromone. Well, we've killed an awful lot of dumb bucks who responded to an estrus pheromone since that time. Uh, today, most older bucks, two and a half years or age or older, realize it is dangerous to go to the source of such scent if human scent is being carried in the air as well. What that means is that if you're out there hunting in October, <laughs> all by yourself, nice quiet place, and you're hunting uh, next to a trail with a fresh buck ground scrape on the ground, you're really in a good place, probably one of the best places you can hunt in a year of whitetail hunting. But if you're also using lure scent at that time, and you're, you're not taking care to make sure your own scent is drifting downwind along with that scent, uh, most bucks aren't going to react to it. They're not going to come to it. They, they realize that's a dangerous place to go. And that's, this is worth another long talk, but, but let me just brief, briefly say, you, no matter what, how you try, you can't, you can't eliminate 100% of human odors with things that you can buy in a store. And the kind of protection you do get from them is fairly short. It's not long-lasting. Uh, Keep this in mind. The very, place, very best place to hunt for a, a mature buck during phase two of the rut from mid-October until 
breeding begins in early November is near a buck ground scrape. And when you're hunting near a buck uh, ground scrape, uh, you should be do uh, downwind of it. Uh, your tree stand should be downwind of it, or at the worst, crosswind, but at crosswind in a, at a point where the breeze is blowing toward one cheek or another, so you're spreading downwind so it doesn't get to the trail where the buck is going to be walking along to get to that ground screen. But at this time of year, nothing is going to keep a big buck from returning to that ground scrape at least once every 24, 48 hours, except if it's unusually warm, unseasonably warm, it's stormy, very windy, or it knows a human is near it. You know, if he's getting fresh human odors from you, whether you're on the ground or in a tree, he's just not going to show up. And once he discovers you at that ground scrape, he's going to abandon it. Uh, if you hunt near a, a freshly renewed ground scrape of a big buck during phase two of the rut uh, uh, and don't see it for even a half day or at least a, one day of hunting, maybe two if it's been stormy or windy in the meanwhile, if you don't see it, the buck knows you're there and it's time to find another ground scrape to hunt near. So you got to be really careful. I, if when scouting earlier and you see one, oh, there's a big one right over there. Look at those branches; they're all shattered. Boy, a big one is a big dominant buck. Is, is uh, this is his scrape right here? A good place to hunt. Don't even go close to it. Don't deposit any of your trail scents next to that ground scrape. Stay away from it about 20, 30 feet if possible, but stay away from it. And then from then on, only approach it from downwind and only, uh, and then hunt from, from a stand site that's downwind or at the worst, crosswind, uh, at a point where you're spreading uh, human odors aren't going to hit the trail that the buck's going to like, Stay away from the trail. Don't even cross it within 100 yards of that scrape that you're planning to hunt. So it's a good idea before hunting season when you're going to do some hunting of scrapes is to find several of them and at, uh, so that maybe one of them will always be downwind uh, or you can always sit downwind, approach downwind and sit downwind of the scrape. But uh, anyway, uh, scrapes are a wonderful places to hunt but you, you don't want to tip off the buck that you're there. Or you're going to ruin it very quickly. you probably the first time you hunt there. A few things to keep in mind now. Now you know the best place to hunt during phase two, but that's going to change real dramatically pretty soon. Let's say you're a northern Minnesota deer hunter and it, on November 3rd, which may start a few days before we actually get to hunt, usually on the first Saturday in November, things are going to change dramatically. You know, all those lesser bucks, except maybe a few yearling bucks, will be in their their little hideaways off range. You just won't see as many bucks. Uh, the one buck that you'd like most to get is going to be most vulnerable all through this phase of the rut. But if you if you don't get them during that time, things can change real dramatically. Once breeding begins, uh, a big buck is not going to have much time to be checking on his ground scrapes or renewing ground scrapes. All of a sudden, those big ground scrapes are going to dry up and leaves will be falling on them and they won't be cleaned off and the dirt won't look freshly renewed because that biggest buck is staying, is uh, accompanying does in heat for the next two weeks and each doe is only going to be in heat 20, uh, 24 to 26 hours at a time and the big buck could be here one day and a mile away the next on the other side of his breeding range where another doe is in estrus. So when those big buck ground scrapes dry up, become covered with leaves and stuff, you know breeding is finally in, is going on. It's not a circus out there anymore. It's kind of, breeding time is pretty quiet, uh, period. And uh, so uh, once breeding begins, then you have to hunt in a different place. Well. Now you know all about phase two of the rut. <laughs>